Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, this is my 10th lecture and in, in this session I would like to discuss the concept of will, concept of vasiyat, essential element of will and the quantum or limitations imposed by Muslim law upon the ligator, upon the transferer. So I will discuss, I will try to cover each and every aspect of vasiyat. In this lecture. So as you all might be knowing that any property can be transferred by any person either by way of gift or by way of vasiyat. So you see property can be transferred by transferred in favor of transfer and if uh, soon after the completion of transfer if transfer gets absolute ownership in the property then the transaction is called as gift. If transferor wants to transfer his property by executing and by uh, executing an instrument, by an instrument, so that instrument, by that instrument, if he wants to transfer his property, that after his death, property would go to the transferee in whose favor property is transferred. So that is known as testamentary transfer and will is good example of testamentary transfer. Why it is called testamentary transfer? Because property is transferred by way of testament, by way of executing an instrument. And by that instrument, it is clearly stated in the document that property will be transferred by donor to the, by transfer to the transferee and it would be effective only after the death of transferor. So then after the death of transferor, this property would go to the transferee. Before his death, before the death of transferor, transferee will get nothing in that property and that transaction is known as uh, testamentary transfer. Non-testamentary property may be also transferred by non-testamentary uh, right for example where a person where owner of a property dies without executing any deed without any uh, without any document if he dies then his property would be the property of the deceased would be inherited by the legal heirs of the deceased his son daughter they would get that property after his death so that transaction is known as non testamentary transfer non-testamentary devolution of property in law. So as of now we have seen that any property can be transferred by way of by three ways. First is by living person to the living person, by a living person to the living but property that transaction would be effective after the death of transferor and third is non-testamentary transfer where property is uh, passes on after the death of the deceased. So this, these are three different ways where a person becomes owner of a property. So the first example which I have referred that is example of gift. In gift, Doni becomes the person in whose favor property is transferred that he becomes absolute owner of the property the moment so these the these uh, these are the method to devolve the property these are the method through which property can be transferred by one person to another person now we will try to understand the law of wasiyat will under muslim law so how a property can be transferred by way of will by way of wasiyat if muslim transferer is making will we making wasiyat then what would be the procedure what would be the 
limitations on quantum of property on quantity of property whether he can transfer his whole property or not we will try to understand all these things in this lecture so you see as you have already seen in my previous lecture i have already highlighted that a muslim donor can if he wants to make a gift of his whole property so he can make gift of his if i suppose if i want to make gift of my property so law permits me to make gift of my whole property even, even in favor of a stranger who is not directly or indirectly associated with me so i have liberty to transfer my whole property by way of gift any similarly any muslim can transfer his whole property by way of gift to any to any person there is no restriction at all and even if he even any muslim can transfer his whole property to the stranger to the stranger here means who is not directly or indirectly associated with that muslim donor who is not legal here a person who has uh, rendered his personal services to that muslim uh, at the time of his um, illness when muslim uh, person was uh, suffering from acute disease suffering from illness so a stranger took care of of that muslim he rendered his personal services to that and now muslim had decided to make gift of his whole property by uh, not to not to his legal heirs not to the son or daughter so he is free muslim law gives liberty to that muslim donor to make gift of his whole property even to the stranger similarly law permits me law permits to any common man to make gift of his whole property to any person there is no restriction at all but law is different in will in wasiyat or in will muslim law does not permit a muslim transferer to make wasiyat of his whole property no muslim can make will of his whole property in favor of a stranger nor in favor of his son or daughter so you see what the concept uh, the logic behind not permitting a muslim to make his whole property to make a wasiyat of his whole property in favor of a stranger because it would be a sinful act it would be a kind of sin so if muslim owner who had decided to it has two aspect and i would like to highlight these two aspect of will wasiyat you see muslim law permits that provides that any person who thinks that or if he wants to transfer his property by way of will by way of by way of wasiyat and if he had decided to transfer his property by way of uh, will uh, to that person who has taken care of when he was suffering from any acute disease so the last desire of that muslim should be uh, respected so the last desire of that muslim transferer should be paid due respect so with that objective muslim islamic jurist recognized the concept of wasiyat so that the last desire of the testator last desire of the transferer should be paid due respect and he should be given liberty to make will in favor of a stranger who had uh, given who had rendered his prior personal services to the muslim to that muslim who was suffering from any acute disease chronic disease and his even his son or daughter they did not provide any Uh, relief they did not provide any food to that muslim so the last in order to respect the last desire of the muslim the concept of wasiyat was incorporated recognized under muslim law on the other hand if a muslim is allowed to transfer his whole property by way of will by way of wasiyat it would be injustice for whom it would be injustice to whom it would be injustice to the legal heirs of the uh, transferer to the muslim legal heirs would be deprived from the benefit of 
property which they would have uh, which they could have got from uh, their parents so keeping balance keeping balance between these two things to in order to respect the last desire of the muslim and uh, and uh, muslim uh, legal here should be given liberty to get their share which they could have got after the death of uh, their parents in our, in order to harmonize these two things the concept of will was recognized in islam so this is you see this is the idea behind this is the philosophy behind recognition of will wasiyat under muslim law the another important thing which logic which is given in favor of wasiyat that is muslim no muslim is allowed to make wasiyat of more than one third property without consent of his legal heirs why because one third property he any muslim can transfer by way of will by way of wasiyat to a stranger without consent of the legal heirs if legal heirs have no objection they if, if they do not raise any objection about transfer of property then muslim transfer can make wasiyat of his whole property but there but the restriction which has been imposed upon muslim that muslim cannot make wasiyat of more than one third property without consent of legal heirs without consent of son or daughter so this is these three important thing which you need to understand after keeping all these thing in mind you can start wasiyat you can see uh, the essential element of wasiyat ingredient of wasiyat and then after i would like to so you see i uh, i have uh, highlighted this wasiyat by by depicting by, by by through this slide so that you can have so that you can get entire information regarding will now you can see on your screen will wasiyat there are two important thing is the person who makes will that is known as legator and the person in whose favor will is made that is known as legatee so i have just tried to depict it on this slide so you can the legator and legatee these two or uh, i have though though this is very technical word in legal language legator and legatee like donor and donee you just understand this legator is a transferer and legatee is a person in whose favor will is made wasiyat is made so a muslim who makes will is called legator and a pers and a person in whose favor wasiyat is made that person is called legatee this legator is also called as testator and legatee is also called as testatrix testator he means a person who transfer his property by way of testament testament here means document so testator testament is a document deed testatrix legatee you see different nomenclatures are used for will and different nomenclatures like bequeath testator legator all these words are used for uh, for uh transferer legator legator testator bequeath be a person who makes will that is also known as will is also known as bequeath bequeather legator testator so you all need to understand all these common words which are used for um, which are used in wasiyat legator and legatee uh, as i said the first requirement is that legator must be muslim on the date of making the will it is the religion of uh, will maker who makes difference between wasiyat and common will the it is the religion of uh, transferer which makes difference between wasiyat and will because you all might be knowing that the 
एनी पर्सन हु कैन हु कैन मेक विल हु कैन ट्रांसफर हिज प्रॉपर्टी बाई वे ऑफ विल बट इफ ट्रांसफर इज बिलोंग्स टू मुस्लिम देन द टोटल द एंटायर ट्रांजेक्शन ऑफ दैट ट्रांसफर वुड बी रेगुलेटेड बाई मुस्लिम लॉ नॉट बाई कॉमन लॉ सो वाई विल इज रेगुलेटेड बाई मुस्लिम लॉ एज आई एज आई सेट दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इट ऑल्सो कम्स विद इन एम्बिट ऑफ सेक्शन टू ऑफ द शरीय एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी सेवन इट इज इट कम्स विद इन परव्यू ऑफ शरीय एक्ट सो दे आर पर्सनल लॉ वुड बी एप्लीकेबल नॉट सो इफ ट्रांसफर बिलोंग्स टू मुस्लिम देन हिज पर्सनल लॉ वुड बी एप्लीकेबल नॉट इंडियन सक्सेसन एक्ट वुड बी एप्लीकेबल इन दैट केस द अदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट विच यू नीड टू रिमेंबर वेयर पार्टीज Uh, have got married in accordance with the provision of uh, special marriage act 1954 then in that case muslim succession act would not be applicable though parties belong to mus, mus, is, belong to uh, sunni sect or shia sect but if they have contracted their marriage both are muslim wife uh, male and female they have contracted their marriage in accordance with the provision of special marriage act 1954 that is popularly known as court marriage or registered marriage if they have contracted their marriage in that act they will lose their their all the rights in muslim law islamic law muslim law will not help them so they will get the benefit of indian succession act they will get the benefit of maintenance of common indian uh, means common uh, law which indian parliament has enacted so you need to it special marriage act 1954 is very important that cha- that will change the status of parties that will change the st- though they are muslim but the moment they uh, contract their marriage in a, in a special in accordance with the special marriage act they will lose their rights and this will gift riba all these things will would not be applicable to the parties so you need to remember this <laughs> so legator must be muslim on the date of making will he must be adult or she must be adult male or female both can make will of his or her property provided that uh, he or she must be of sound mind he or she must be adult in i of law adult here means age of majority is 18 years they must be above 18 years legator and must be of sound mind so i you see the another important component of a valid wasiyat is it may be oral or it may be in writing so where wasiyat is in writing if document is register if document is signed by legator if uh, it is stated by legator that he had decided to transfer his property by way of will by way of wasiyat then if document is executed that document is called as uh, will deed in english language and in arabic word that document is known as wasiyat nama so wasiyat nama is a documentary proof of the will of the wasiyat da- wasiyat nama is the documentary proof of the last desire of the muslim which he wanted to transfer his property by way of will so with the help of wasiyat nama legati would be in beneficial position and with the help of that document he would get the property after the death of legator from the legal heirs of legator so he he would be always in beneficial position if uh, wasiyat nama is executed so this is another important aspect of in early, in you see uh, in ancient period there was no literacy rate was no not so high so that is why muslim law as islamic law islamic scholars as well they didn't emphasize on uh, registration of will or they did not emphasize on they did not uh, make any emphasis on will wasiyat uh, registration of wasiyat so registration is not necessary it may be oral it may be uh, legator may declare his intention in presence of uh, muslim in presence of some witness that he had decided to transfer his property uh, in favor of mr x so 
witness may testify that ha they means they have heard they uh, they are the witness they have heard uh, that uh, legator wanted to transfer his property by 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 uh, this way so oral it may be oral or writing if it is if it is in writing then wasiyat nama may also be executed now you see the another important thing is that in wasiyat legate would get property after the death of legator sometimes it may happen that uh, where legate dies before the death of legator then that transaction is known as lapse of legacy under muslim law whether property would uh, where the transaction would be lapse or so you see law is different for sunnis and shia where property is transferred by way of will and legatee dies before the death of legator so under sunni law legacy lapses means if legatee dies before the death of legator property will remain with legator and property will revert back to the legator property will remain with legator property will not go to the legal heirs because legatee dies before the death of legator but law is different for shia muslims shia law doesn't accept this shia islamic shia muslim scholars they uh, have evolved a technique to get that property where legatee dies before the death of legator after the death of legator legatee legal heirs of legatee would get that property means property would go to the legal heirs of the uh, legal heirs of the legatee so how you see how law is uh, different for sunni and shia sunni law is in favor of retaining that property property remains with legator if legatee dies before the death of legator on the other hand property if legatee dies before the death of legator proper that property would go to the legal heirs of uh, legal heirs of legatee so this is basic difference between uh, lapses of legacy uh, be between sunni sect and shia sect so this is known as lapses of legacy now come to this subject matter of wasiyat and the important aspect of what property can be subject matter of wasiyat so you see any property can be subject matter of uh, wasiyat provided that it should not be on islamic movable property or immovable property both can be subject matter of uh, wasiyat you just you can see on your screen movable property or immovable both property can be subject matter of wasiyat as you might be knowing that any immovable property has two important component corpus and usufruct corpus and usufruct corpus here means physical existence corpus body body of property any property has two important component corpus and usufruct so question may arise that whether corpus uh, can be transferred or usufruct can be usufruct you can see on your screen i have mentioned and uh, it is always uh, very difficult to pronounce this usufruct huh? usufruct here means uh, benefit or produce from a property so that is usufruct that is known as any profit or benefit which arises from a property that is known as usufruct so any property has corpus as well as usufruct for example mango garden that is example of that is garden is corpus and mango that is usufruct so any owner any muslim owner of a mango garden he can transfer he can make will of his mango garden 
retaining the huge fruct he can say that this um, this mango uh, this garden would be given to mr x and this right to get mango from that garden will be given to the y so y would be entitled only to get mango from the tree and mr x would be entitled to take possession over the garden so after having that after having that right one party can use one party can exercise over the corpus <coughs> and the party can exercise the right to collect benefit from the and the important thing is that if suppose if a house uh, which is to be gifted by donor to the doni and that house is on rent so donor may put a condition that doni will have right to collect rent from the house and house will remain with his son so you see rent here is rent from house is used for example of benefit or profit rent so right to collect rent is example of use fruct and right to reside in the house that is that is come that will come within corpus so this is example of corpus and use fruct you see and the important thing is that law is different for uh, life interest wasiyat of life interest sunni law and shia law as i uh, said sunni law has so many differences in comparison to shia law so there is different between sunni law and shia law on this point shia law has recognized that uh, if uh, wasiyat is made by legator in favor of legate for the life time of legate you just remember this uh, where legate has made wasiyat muslim legate has made wasiyat of his property in favor of legate that after the death of legate property will revert back to the legate sunni law doesn't recognize this thing sunni islamic scholar they did not recognize this concept under sunni law once property is transferred by way of wasiyat that property cannot be taken back on the other hand under shia law where property is transferred by way of wasiyat by legator to the legate condition may be put by shia legator that after the death of legate property will revert back to the donor uh, revert back to the legator and after the death of legate can enjoy that property legate can enjoy that property after the death of legate property will revert back to the legal heirs of legate so this is concept of life interest so that interest can be created by a part transferer in favor of transferee for the life for the remaining life time of transferee after the death of transferee the property will revert back to the legal heirs of the so this is well now here now this is the another important aspect of testamentary right you just with the help of this slide i will try to discuss testamentary right you can see on your screen that is a legator has not <coughs> absolute right or unrestricted right to make wasiyat you see i have uh, tried to explain this with the help of this slide i have put this stranger legal heir sunni what is law what is exact position under sunni law and shia law so you see testament any muslim legator can make wasiyat of his one third property in favor of legate without consent of legal heirs so if muslim male wants to make wasiyat of his property he can make only one third share of that property in favor of legate without consent of legal heir without consent of son or daughter so this is 
restriction regarding quantum of uh, quantity of transfer. So, no Muslim is allowed to transfer more than one third without consent of. So, this this law one third Quranic injunction that is known as Quranic injunction. Why I am uh, why I am highlighting this that is Quranic injunction. So, it is believed that once Prophet Muhammad said, once Prophet Muhammad asked his people Vekas that what he would do, how he will transfer his property by way of Fasiyat, whether he can transfer whole property or one third. So, he replied, neither one third, neither two third property, not three fourth property can be transferred could be transferred by way of will uh, to the legatee. Only one third property should be transferred by Muslim to the by any Muslim. So, since then it is uh, believed that since then it has been uh, practiced that Muslim it uh, Muslim should not go beyond that limit. Why Muslim Muslims are not allowed to transfer more than two third or three fourth property because of that Quranic injunction. It is specifically stated in Quran that they should not go beyond that limit. So only one third property or two third proper, or two third one third property can be transferred by way of a without consent of legal heirs. So you see this. Uh, this is the law regarding. Uh, wasiyat will. So, Sunni as well as Shia both, they do not have any objection about one third. So, both sect follow this rule <coughs> that there is no problem at all if quantity of property is one third. The problem is with uh, more than one third. So, this law is equally applicable for Sunnis and Shia that uh, without consent of legal heirs, Sunni legator as well as Shia legator can make wasiyat of his one third property without legal heirs, without consent of legal heirs. With the consent of legal heirs, any Muslim can transfer his property. Now, you see law is different <coughs> on this point, Sunni law. <coughs> and Shia law have both have some disagreement on this point. What is Sunni law on this point? <coughs> Sunni law according to Sunni law even one third cannot be given to legal heirs. You see what is law regarding legal heirs? Legal here means uh, son or daughter who are legally entitled to inherit the property after the death of father or mother. So, legal, so you see law regarding legal heirs are different. How it is different? Sunni law says that no Sunni legator can make will even one third property of a, by way of a seer to legal heirs without consent of remaining legal heirs. On the other hand, Shia law is in, is in favor of giving liberty to Shia legator that Shia legator can make wasiyat of his one third property without consent of legal heirs. You see the difference between these two. Sunni law does not permit any Sunni legator to make will to the legal heirs. On the other hand, Shia law permits Shia legator to make will of one third property, one third without consent of remaining legal heirs. There is grammatical, I think you will all will clear, there is grammatical error on this in this slide. So, without one third are legal heirs. 
if ligator belongs to sunni sect and sunni ligator wants to transfer his property by way of wasiyat to his own son he cannot make wasiyat to his own son without consent of remaining without consent of other sons or daughter this is law sia law on this point is if ligator is sia will maker is sia muslim he can make wasiyat of his one third property without consent of legal heirs so sia ligator is free not to take consent from legal heirs if he makes will of his one third property to his own son or daughter he is not required to get consent from from legal heirs uh, from his son or daughter on the other hand sunni ligator cannot make wasiyat of his one third property to his own son or daughter this is one aspect of wasiyat so in addition to this uh, there is bequeathable property as i said bequeath wasiyat is also bequeathable property bequeathable property is that property which remains after deduction of funeral expenses or any debt or any debt if any so after deducting funeral expenses or debt what remains that property is known as bequeathable property so that bequeathable property can be subject can be uh, taken by by the legatee you can understand this with the help of this example suppose you can i just want to give a illustration with the help of that illustration you all would be in position to have complete understanding about bequeathable property as i said bequeathable property is that property which remains after deducting funeral expenses and debt so suppose if uh, muslim ligator who had taken loan from a bank and he uh, executed a will wasiyat in favor of ligati the total value of his property was uh, 1 lakh rupees he had taken loan from a bank suppose 20000 rupees his total borrowing is 20000 rupees and funeral expenses is also 20000 rupees so after the death of muslim legator this 40000 40000 rupees would be deducted from 1 lakh so 1 lakh minus 20 plus 20 40 so here the remaining 60000 the total value of his property is 60000 so this 60000 the value of his total property is 60000 rupees so 60 out of 60000 rupees if he had made wasiyat before his death in favor of legati so legati would get 1/3 of 60000 so 1/3 of 60000 would be <coughs> uh 20000 it means stranger legati would get only one third of remaining property of the deceased legator so one third of 60 it would be uh, 20000 so only 20000 rupees that value that share would go to the legatee and remaining uh, 40000 rupees that that share would go to the legal heirs of the uh, legal heirs of legator so this is all about your bequeathable property how bequeathable property um, is distributed and how legatee would get bequeathable pro uh, property problem arises when uh, legatee there are several legatee if muslim legator has transferred his property by, by way of will uh, to several legatees legatees are more than one so in that case the problem always arises that what how and uh, and if uh, ligator belongs to sunni sect or our ligator belongs to shia sect so law is different for sunnis and shia 
so they have discovered different form of uh, roots they have different they have evolved different rule to um, to decide the respective their respective shares in that uh, property so sunila has different preferential and they have they have evolved ratable revenue and preferential rule for devolution of property if there are several legatees so i uh, now this is all about your uh, testamentary right how a stranger can get only one third without consent of legal heirs though there are some technicalities in now come to this uh, another aspect of will as you can see on your screen this will may be conditional or contingent will conditional and contingent will wasiyat so i was talking about types of will so will is divided into two categories conditional and contingent many times it creates doubt in the mind of a student that if condition is imposed by donor by legator upon don uh, legate then whether question may arise whether legate is under obligation to fulfill that condition or not so you see as you all might be knowing that conditional you you just uh, you can see on your screen conditional gift and contingent gift so conditional will wasiyat will here means wasiyat conditional will wasiyat is that will of uh, which contains some condition imposed by legator upon legate for example where legator imposes any condition upon legate that legate would get his share property only when only after the fulfillment of that condition for example uh, if legator puts a condition that legatee would get a property if he marries with his daughter legator has muslim legator has put this condition upon legatee if legatee suppose if uh, legator dies and legatee does not fulfill that condition which was imposed by legator before his death even though legatee is entitled to get his property uh, after the death of legator so conditional will is valid conditional will is uh, will is valid condition imposed by legator is valid and law presumes that as if no condition was imposed by legator upon legate transaction would be valid wasiyat would be valid but condition condition is valid and muslim law presumes that as if no condition was imposed the same case is with uh, same case is with will also in common will if uh, any hindu male has uh, made a will in favor of legatee and if he dies before his death if he has uh, if he had put any condition upon legatee even uh, in that case uh, after the death of legator legate without fulfilling that condition legate can get that property so it is not necessary for legate to fulfill that condition so you always you must understand this the same the same case is with wasiyat also if muslim legator has uh, put any condition upon legate legate without fulfilling that condition can get that property that can that should be so conditional gift in many times it may happen that a muslim legate uh, uh, can pehle aap log thoda set kar lijiye tab us kariye so well i was talking about uh, conditional will and contingent will so in that context i try to explain conditional will and contingent will so with the help of example you can get entire information about contingent gift and uh, conditional and contingent as i said condition imposed by legator upon legatee would be void and transaction is valid 
so now come to this contingent gift contingent gift is no gift in i uh, contingent will is no will in i of law similarly contingent wasiyat is no wasiyat in i of law any kind of contingency which may happen or may not happen which is beyond the control of the legator that will make that transaction void for example if uh, legator uh, makes will in favor of wasiyat in favor of legate with a condition that uh, legator legate would get property only when mr x or mr y dies so death of x or y is not be, is not under the control of legator neither legate so this kind of contingency may happen or may not happen so in this kind in this situation legate the transaction was the transaction is always void is not treated as valid transaction and legate would get nothing so this is all about your conditional and contingent wasiyat now come to revocation of wasiyat in this actually uh, grammatically how wasiyat can be revoked and to what extent uh, this wasiyat can be uh legator has liberty to revoke his promise legator uh, as i said legator has absolute liberty to revoke his promise uh, before his death and it is very simple task for legator to revoke wasiyat before his death but after the death of legator legate would get uh, possession over the property so revocation of gift uh, is uh, is classified into two categories implied revocation and express revocation e express revocation in express revocation legator may say that now he had decided to not to uh, give uh, property to the legate so in this way he may uh, legator may say that Uh, he had decided to deprive the legate from the benefit of uh, legacy from the benefit of this property so merely by making declaration that uh, legate had decided not to give his property to the legate so it would be treated as express declaration of uh, uh, express revocation of will was here there may be some uh, possibility or where impliedly will wasiyat can be revoked impliedly how if legator had decided to make will of the same property so by making second will or third will he can deprive the first legatee suppose legator you can understand this with the help of example where legator muslim legator has made will in favor of legatee by saying that his property uh, legatee would get uh, property after death of legator but after one month or two month legator makes will of same property in favor of another legatee so law presumes that inference can be drawn that first legatee has been deprived from the benefit of that uh, wasiyat similarly if legator had decided to deprive the second legatee he can he being absolute owner of the property before his death he can deprive the second legatee also just by making wasiyat in favor of third legatee so if legate muslim legator has made wasiyat in favor of third legatee so first and second legatee would be would get nothing from that legator so this is you say this is implied revocation of wasiyat or you see in uh, express revocation of will uh, if he either he can uh, expressly declare his intention or he can execute a document by executing that document he can uh, expressly revoke that wasiyat 
so this is implied and express revocation of gift uh, revocation of will will can be revoked uh, by muslim legator before the death of uh, before his death but after death of legator uh, that Uh, wasiyat cannot be revoked it becomes irrevocable and legatee would get possession over the property so before before uh, death of legator he is always free to revoke his uh, wasiyat this is revocation of will and the last you see gift and uh, wasiyat uh, there are certain things which uh, which are very common in gift and muslim gift and uh, wasiyat that is a death bed gift and in arabic word it is referred as marzul maut death bed gift though it is death bed gift but uh, in fact it is uh, similar to the wasiyat though the, it is uh, made by uh, muslim donor when he has apprehension that he may die very soon that is known as death bed gift but the consequences of death bed gift is like wasiyat so firstly i would like to dis- discuss <coughs> this peculiar form of wasiyat which muslim law has recognized as a death bed gift so death bed gift is is that gift when a muslim person has reasonable apprehension in the in his mind that he is suffering from acute disease and he or she may die very soon having that apprehension in mind if muslim legator makes will in favor of legate and if he dies then that transaction is in fact wasiyat though gift was made by muslim before his death when he was on death bed when he was on death bed and suffering from chronic disease acute disease he has apprehension that he may die very soon because doctor has already communicated him that he will die he, he that um, muslim legator is suffering from acute disease and in such kind of uh, disease people may die very soon because this disease if doctor if any medical practitioner or doctor communicates this to the legator muslim legator and that muslim legator he is uh, he is on death bed and uh, after uh, that information if muslim legator had decided to execute a deed if he uh, write something on a plain paper that he had decided to transfer his property by way of uh, by way of bill and just after making that document if just after signing that document if he dies then then that transaction is treated as uh, wasiyat though gift was made by uh, muslim uh, person when he was on death bed but soon after making that uh, document soon after executing that deed he dies it it works like a wasiyat so all the rights which a uh, legatee can get after the death of legator here in death bed uh, gift lege the donee becomes legatee and legatee would get his property uh, uh, from the legal heirs of legal heirs of the legator so this uh, the important thing is that uh, reasonable apprehension in the mind of legator how inference can be drawn that at the time of death muslim uh, had reasonable apprehension in his mind you see how uh, it depends upon uh, disease it depends upon illness sickness uh, it uh, if disease is of such a nature that which is incurable there is no cure in medical science in medicine in medical science and doctor uh, and if doctor informs him that he may die, he is suffering from this kind of disease then and then after if he makes a gift of his property suppose if he survives that muslim legate if muslim person who has made who has made gift of that property if he survives then in that case the transaction would be treated as gift you see the you see the uh, 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 
beauty of this uh, death bed gift if he survives then the the property which was transfer the the transaction um, uh, would be treated as gift and if he dies very soon or just after executing the deed the deed document is document uh, that transaction would be treated as uh, wasiyat so you it is it is the death of legator which makes that document uh, which makes that document as a will or wasiyat and if he doesn't die if he survives then his survival will give the benefit to the doni and doni will get absolute ownership over the property in case of death of uh, muslim legator who dies after uh, executing the document if he dies then then the transfer in whose favor property was to be transferred by way of will would get only one third property he will get only one third property because here the rule relating to wasiyat would be applicable and now legatee has become a stranger and a stranger cannot get more than one third property from the legator so he will get only one third property from the legator not more than uh, not more than that so legal heirs are bound to give only one third property to the legatee legatee so without consent if they have raised any objection legate uh, legal heirs have raised any objection then legatee would get only one third property not more than that in case of, and if he survives then that transaction would be treated as gift hiba and doni will get entire property whole property which was transferred by donor to the doni so this thing you need to understand that Uh, how death bed gift may be treated as wasiyat how the consequences of death bed gift would be uh, was like will or wasiyat and it would be treated as simply gift hiba if he survives if uh, transferer of that property survives that is very interesting uh, thing uh, that death bed gift is may be treated as gift if uh transferer survives and doni will get absolute property whole property of the donor and if he dies if if transferer dies the transaction will be treated as wasiyat and big legate would get not more than one third share from the legal heirs of legator so this is all about your death bed gift and death bed gift may be treated as will or wasiyat will so i think after this discussion you all would be in position to have complete idea about wasiyat i have covered each and every aspect of wasiyat meaning concept of wasiyat with what objective this wasiyat was recognized by islamic scholars sunni law and shia law there are so many differences between these two sect uh, sunni law uh, is different in many respect with shia law so you all uh, i i also covered conditional gift conditional wasiyat and contingent wasiyat so after this uh, discussion i think you all must have understood all the things which i have just discussed in this lecture and it would be very beneficial for you not for uh, in your examination in competitive examination and with this i would like to conclude this lecture thank you thank you all